Hi everyone, I'm Willow. Thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to be doing a gouache painting in my sketchbook and I'm a little nervous to see how it's going to turn out, but the only way to find out is to jump right in. So let's go. painting, I do want to talk really quick about the sketching process for this one. I drew these the other day with no intention of making a video out of it. I just wanted to see if I could draw myself in a more cartoonified style than what I normally do. I started off just doodling to see what I could come up with. I actually really liked how this one came out, but it doesn't really look anything like me. So then I took a reference photo and drew it again using that. And I think I improved quite a bit between those two. And then from there, I tried to take what I learned from the first two sketches and bring it into this sketch here. I actually traced that um, and then used a light pad to get my final sketch exactly how I wanted it over on this page. And this is going to be the illustration that we're painting today. But what I really wanted to share with you guys is actually under this little sticky note here. And I just want to preface this by saying that all of these drawings were done in one sitting on the same day. But you guys, this is where I started. What is this? Sketch number one, sketch number two. Number one, number two. When I started, I didn't know what I was doing. And you know what? It's not bad, but it's pretty bad. <laughs> So I just wanted to show you the progress that I made from the first sketch to the second sketch, to the third sketch, to the fourth sketch, and eventually all the way over to the final image. For this illustration, I am going to be using my Holbein Artist Gouache. I did custom mix these skin tones. I find that I use them a lot in my paintings and not having to mix them every time is a total game changer. By the way, the sketchbook that I'm using today is the Denik sketchbook. I've been really impressed with the paper in it. I'm not uh, paid by them in any way. You guys, this is my second YouTube video. If you think that I'm sponsored, I'm absolutely not. But I'm really impressed with the paper in this notebook. I would definitely recommend a Denik sketchbook if you've never tried one before. And I will leave a link in the description box below if you want to check them out. To be totally honest, I am a bit terrified of putting paint on this, but you know what? If there's one thing I learned from the sketches that you guys just saw, it's that you can't get better at something without just doing it. So without further rambling, let's do this. The paintings I've done with gouache up till now have been fairly realistic. Not that I can paint realism very well, but they've definitely leaned more in that direction. But with this one, I wanted to simplify it as much as I could. And you would think that making something simple would be, well, simple, right? Eh, yeah, no. For starters, I've never colored anything in a style like this before, and while I sorta kinda had an idea in my head of what I wanted it to look like, actually executing that was a whole nother story, and I made some rookie mistakes. The look I'm going for is like, flat blocks of color, if that makes sense. So I thought I might be able to get away with just one or two layers. So instead of starting with a light wash and building up the color like you're supposed to with gouache, I jumped right in with a heavy layer of paint. And if you've ever used gouache, you know that if you have a thicker layer of paint on the paper, it can get reactivated and kind of moved around if you try to add more paint on top. And I ended up adding a lot more paint. Like, I think I painted over the entire face four or five times, and I just kept trying to slap it on thicker and thicker to avoid reactivating the layers underneath. Yeah, definitely not ideal. At the beginning, I showed you that I had pre-mixed some lighter skin tones in my palette, which I stand by what I said, that it is super helpful and a total game changer. But with this particular illustration, I wasn't sure how dark to make the shadows or how much contrast the piece needed. So I was still spending a ton of time mixing and tweaking the colors. Later on, you'll see me swatching the skin tone on a separate piece of paper. And that's because gouache dries so much darker than what the color looks like when it's wet. So I would mix what I thought was the right skin tone and I would try to make it a little bit lighter than what I wanted. 
but then it would dry even darker than I thought, and I would have to do it all over again. Honestly, that is one of the things you just have to get used to with gouache. How much they color shift and how to get the look you're going for is going to vary based on your specific paints, and it just takes a lot of trial and error. I love when artists share how long something took them to make, so I'm gonna be honest with you here. And as simple and straightforward as this painting seems, it took me nearly five hours to complete. I'm glad I pushed through though, because by the end I felt like I was getting the hang of it, and I actually started to get excited to try this idea again and see if I can do it better next time. Or at least faster next time. <laughs> looking up to see if my head is in the shot and then I realize my head isn't in the shot when I'm looking up so busted I want to go back to the sketches that I showed you at the beginning of this because I want to make it clear how easy it would have been for me to get discouraged with that first sketch and just give up. I don't know about you, but when I'm watching a video and seeing a piece of art come together, it looks so effortless. Like, you don't get to see the hours of work that the artist put in or the mess ups or the retakes. and. You don't usually get to see the terrible first drawings that led to something polished in the end. I don't want my channel to be that way because if you're a perfectionist like me, you might start to think that's how art is supposed to be. And that couldn't be further from the truth. The truth is, whether you're a total beginner or an experienced artist, you are going to have days when nothing you make meets your standards or makes you happy. Especially if you have high standards like I do. But here's the thing I want to tell you, because it's something I've needed to hear so many times. Every drawing you make doesn't have to be good. Let me say that again. Everything you make doesn't have to be good. It is okay to spend an entire day making art you don't like. 
If that's the kind of day that you're having, I'm really sorry. But it is going to be all right. Sometimes you just have to warm up a little and things will start to come a bit easier. And sometimes you have to practice for weeks to see yourself improve. But that feeling when you do start to see yourself make progress is so worth it. That giddy excitement when something clicks and suddenly you went from drawing something like this what is this? To something like this. That feeling of learning a new skill and going from really bad at something to kinda sorta not so bad to, hey, I'm actually getting kinda good at this. That's the feeling I wanna seek out with my art. Not just the satisfaction of making something you're happy with right out of the gate. God, I wish I could go back like, 10 years and tell myself this. We have arrived. It is time for line art. In my last video, I talked about how putting so much focus on the end result sucked all of the fun out of art for me. It can be so frustrating to pour hours and hours into a piece only to have it turn out nothing like what you saw in your head. But that frustration, at least for me, it had more to do with my mindset and the expectations that I put on myself to be able to bring that vision to life on like the first try. That made art feel like such a slog. And even though this painting took me five hours to make when I thought it should only take maybe two, it didn't feel super discouraging. And I think the reason is because I was looking for opportunities to learn from my mistakes along the way. And at the end of the piece, I 
actually wanted to try it again because I felt like I could do it better next time. There's this awesome quote by George Bernard Shaw, a life spent making mistakes is not only more honorable, but more useful than a life spent doing nothing. And when I look back at my art portfolio, I can tell that for the past 10 years, most of what I have been doing is nothing. That's hard to admit because I've been making art for a long time and I think I'm all right at it, but because I was so hard on myself and so unsatisfied with the outcome of my earlier pieces, it really held me back from practicing and doing the work that I needed to do in order to get better. Now, I'm not gonna lie and say that changing your mindset is easy, and I am certainly not a good example all the time. That voice of perfectionism that I have it isn't there because I consciously think that being hard on myself or setting high expectations is the right way to go. It's there because of a deep web of experiences and emotions that have shaped me. And probably because it felt like a way to protect myself from failure. And ironically, I think it's done just the opposite. I have failed plenty. And by not trying and experimenting and taking a more relaxed approach to the things that I attempt, it has made those failures feel even harder to overcome. There's one more quote I want to leave you with. I'm a big fan of quotes. You guys let me know in the comments what your favorite quote is. Um, but there's one more quote I want to leave you with, and this one is from Ralph Waldo Emerson. He said, Don't be too timid and squeamish about your actions. All life is an experiment. Let me tell you, I wish that I could take my younger self by the shoulders and say, listen, you don't have to be perfect all the time. Life is an experiment. Everyone is experimenting, and it's only through that experimentation and failure and experimentation and failure that you get better, and you end up making things that you do like. So if you're making art that you are not happy with, please stick with it. Please keep going. It is going to be okay. What have you been trying to do that you wish you could be better at? It doesn't have to be art, it could be anything at all. It can be so scary to try something new because you know you're opening yourself up to the possibility that you might not be any good at it, or you might fail, or someone might judge you. But as cliche as it sounds, you have to do something poorly before you can do it well. But eventually, you'll make progress, and progress feels so much better than perfection. Let me know if this video has helped you, and also, what should I talk about next time? Thank you for sticking with me till the end. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time. Bye! Oh, and in case you missed it, click here to see last week's video where I inked a portrait using only one color. Holy moly!